Well, it's been a long time since we've all been together this, in this way, and um, I know I'm still wearing a mask, and many of you are as well, um, but it feels pretty good. So uh, thank you, parents, for all coming out. Thank you, students. Let's, uh, yeah, let's give it up. Welcome to the in-person eighth grade awards night. Uh, it's been uh, over two, it's been two years since we've been, with, since we have been able to do this. Um, and I wanna really acknowledge uh, some people who have uh, helped to make this a very special event. Um, first off, we have um, Ben Bohoke and Lou Schwartz from the Stevens Buswell Post. They will be presenting our citizenship award uh, we have a keynote speaker of Mr. Tom Liberty, our assistant superintendent. Um, all of the background, the, a lot of the communications that you've heard and a lot of the tallying, the lists, all the double checking was our own Mrs. Fitzgerald in the main office. Uh, if we could give her a little round of applause, I'd really appreciate that. And the ever-present BCTV, um, I know our, our Bedford uh, community television channel, they post so much. They're at our games, at our events, they're, they're everywhere. And, uh, and I really appreciate uh, the support of BCTV to help us uh, put this out. And actually the wonderful part about that is although we had to limit uh, the guests that came with all of our students, um, we actually get to now stream this out. So maybe there's some folks that couldn't come in to see this that get to be a part of this this year. Um, and that's a real nice improvement as we're going forward. Before we get into uh, this evening, I have to make one special announcement, is that um, this is the eighth grade awards night. It is not the track awards night for Bedford High School. So if you thought you were coming to the track awards, uh, that's gonna be in the commons of BHS. So um, we, you could even wait a little while before you go out so nobody notices, but uh, it's another positive event. Uh, we'll just take them uh, as, we, as we get them. So students, um, congratulations. Tonight we're going to recognize academic achievement and then, uh, and then the citizenship of our students. Um, two very, very big things that make Lurgio a very special place to be. As I think about uh, what it takes to earn these great grades uh, or to demonstrate to your teachers that you are a person who makes Lurgio a wonderful place to be through your citizenship, um, I have to say I'm always proud of the students. After we've endured not just one year, but almost a year and a half, in fact, this is a group of students that I feel like I've had the least amount of time with in my 24 years. As I reflect back on my 24 years in education, this has been the hardest two years I've ever done. As I've watched these students grow and these students even thrive at times in these challenging times, it is the most awe-inspired I have ever been of my students. To do this, to accomplish this in a normal year is challenging. To do that in the middle of a pandemic is just outstanding. So students, um, there's got to be some perk to being your principal, and that's I get to be the first to congratulate you on your achievements. Job well done. Please, parents, staff, everyone, please join me in giving them a round of applause. But students, you don't get here alone. And I know that as well as anybody. And that actually doesn't change in your life. You need other people. You need other people to support you, to be part of your team. Um, I'm very, very lucky to have the staff and the people around me at Lurgio that help us create the school that we try to strive to have for all of you. And students, one of the biggest rocks in your life are the people that are sitting above the wooden rails uh, and have come to join you or the people who are out in TV land watching you today. Uh, those are your parents, your family. So students, could you please give them a round of applause for their support of you? So it's a great evening. We're gonna honor uh, citizenship. We're gonna honor world language, academic awards. Um, it's going to be a, a night of acknowledging some great work by our students. And to kick us off, I have our Assistant Superintendent, Mr. Tom Liberty, to share a few words with us this evening. So I give you Tom Liberty. Well, thank you. Um, I hope this goes well. I had to do some quick editing. I was prepared to speak to track athletes tonight, but evidently that's uh, not the right venue. 
So thank you uh, for having me here. My name is Mr. La Liberty. I've been in your classrooms. I've been in your halls. Um, hopefully you recognize me. Tom La Liberty, the assistant superintendent of the great school district of Bedford. Very uh, happy to see so many people here today. So thank you all for coming. Um, and, and what a great night, huh? It's June 8th, 2021. Mr. Joyce already said we're here in person and it just feels good. No videos, no audios. It's just people to people, face to face. And I just cherish that. So this is terrific. All of us in here probably can't say what we were doing one year ago today, June 8th, 2020. But we can say what we weren't doing. We didn't have 350 kids at Lurgio Middle School in seventh grade taking classes a year ago. Summer's a great time for sports and baseball. None of us were going down to Fenway Park to catch the Red Sox. New York City's not that far away. If you're like me and love the theater, we weren't able to venture down to Broadway to catch a show. Music lovers, the Snoo Arena in Manchester has concerts, but there were no drums, guitars, or vocals a year ago. You know, COVID shut down many things, some big and some things that we just took advantage of. But today is a better day and we are hopeful and we are much more optimistic than we were one year ago. But the year, nevertheless, was tough. It was a tough year. And today I want to talk to you, RAL 8th graders, about some people who've gone through some tough times and how they got through them. So let me share a few stories with you. Stephen King, right, great author from my neighboring state of Maine, right, wrote Salem's Lot, Carrie, books into movies, doing well. But back in the days prior to email, they used to write their novels and they'd send them off to publishers and wait for a physical letter to come in the mail to say yay or nay, and the nays we call rejection letters. Stephen King had so many rejection letters that he used to put them on the wall with a nail. And eventually that nail couldn't handle all of his rejection letters and he got a bigger spike to hold them. It was a good visual for him. Tough times for Stephen King. Colonel Sanders, right? Kentucky Fried Chicken. Fried foods are bad, we just call it KFC now. Marketing at no cost to you, just a little advice. Um, he prior to establishing Kentucky Fried Chicken, which he started by selling fried chicken in a gas station during the Great Depression, failed many businesses and lost money. Tough times for Colonel Sanders. Oprah Winfrey, we know her in the entertainment world, very successful, talk show, actress, owns all kinds of things, businesses, very, very successful. Childhood had abuse and neglect in it tough times. J.K. Rowling, okay, we know her, you all have read some of her books, right? Harry Potter. Um, prior to writing The Sorcerer's Stone, she was so poor that she had to get help from the government to live day to day. She couldn't afford a computer, so she literally typed on a manual typewriter, which was outdated technology even then, multiple times, sent them in an envelope to various publishers throughout the world because she couldn't afford a computer. Tough times for J.K. Rowling. And the last one is probably someone you haven't heard of, but a fantastic book I recently read called In the Shadows of War. It's about a gentleman named Roy Allen. Roy Allen was a pilot during World War II, and he was flying a mission over France. And at the time, France was occupied by Germans, okay? You read Knight. You understand a little bit about World War II. Germans were the bad guys, right? So he flew over a mission and he got shot down and he parachuted out. For a little while, there was a group of people in France called the French Resistance that supported 
people that were in hiding from the Germans that were soldiers. Eventually, the Gestapo, which was an intelligence agency for Germany, found him, put him in a concentration camp where he was subjected to starvation and beatings. Tough times. All those people had tough times, but all of them got through them at their own successes. And I want to share with you a couple, many reasons, but the two of them I want to share with you. And those things that those people all had was hope and perseverance. So hope, as defined by the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, is to cherish a desire with anticipation. So looking forward, they want something that's better than they, what they have now, and they look forward to it. We have simple hopes every day, right? We hope it doesn't rain when we're on vacation. We hope if we go fishing that they're going to be biting. We hope when we watch our favorite teams that they're going to win. And of course, many of us, we hope that mom and dad are going to have pizza for dinner. Those are just simple things that we do all the time. But we also have hopes for more pressing matters. When we have sick family members, we hope they heal. When we have loved ones that are in the military, we hope they stay safe. And you will all be in a situation where you're looking to get a great job that you see, and you're going to hope that you land that job. Psychology Today says that hope contributes to our well-being. So when we have hope, it's good for us. It's a good thing. It helps us cope with stress. So when we're stressed out and we look at the future and see it better, it helps calm us down. It helps us to get through uncertainty when we don't know what's happen gonna happen in the future. It just helps us handle it better. It helps our happiness and it motivates us to do the things that we need to do to meet that dream that we see when we hope. So when you think of the author, uh, the authors uh, Stephen King and J.K. Rowling, they hoped that their writings would get published. Oprah Winfrey hoped her childhood would get better. Colonel Sanders hoped that he would have a profitable business. And Roy Allen, the pilot in a concentration camp, hoped he would walk out of that one day. So hope is when you think forward and look at something that is better than the situation you are currently in. Perseverance is defined by the dictionary.com is the persistence in doing something despite how difficult it may be, right? We persevere every day. We persevere when we accomplish difficult tasks. We persevere when we change our personal habits that make us healthier. We persevere when we continuously tinker on motors to finally get them to run. We persevere when we finally can hit a golf ball down the middle consistently, as difficult as it may be. Those are things we do all the time. If you've ever heard the, mod the, the slogan, when at first you don't succeed, try, try again, I think that's a pretty good definition of perseverance. It's the belief that because you struggle or failed multiple times doesn't mean you're going to get it right the next time. So when I think of King and Rawling, they didn't stop writing. Sanders continued to stay in the business field. Winfrey and Allen, they just simply got up every day and dealt with it. They persevered. And they became successful in their lives. And you know what? So have you. Didn't you hope that the COVID pandemic would improve? Didn't you persevere two marches ago when the government said the whole, st I mean, the governor said the whole state of New Hampshire is gonna have remote learning? You persevered through hybrid learning, you persevered when we all came back, and all the time we had the mitigations of COVID. And we're seeing them tonight still, mass and being separated. But you did it, you persevered. You won. The beauty of hope and perseverance is that you control it. You control how you're going to see things when times are tough. You control that. You control your effort. 
and how you're going to try, if you fail, you're going to control it. That is all in your power. <clears throat> so every day we walk by and we mingle with people that have done these things that we don't even know. For instance, we pass athletes who have been cut from teams, but instead of quitting the sport, they hoped they would get better. And they persevered through training to make the team the following season. Actors have been cut from parts, but instead of quitting, they hoped they could get cast in a play at a later date. They persevered through practice and rehearsals, and they made the play. Students, I'm sure that this has happened to many of you. I know this happened to me. Sometimes we write poor essays, or they're not as good as we want them to be. But we refuse to fail. Instead, we hoped we could be good writers, and we made the necessary edits to produce a quality paper. The next time you face adversity and struggles, please remember that can, you control what you hope for, and you control how hard you will persevere when things don't go well. We all have controversy in our life. We all have struggles. Some are bigger than others, but we all go through it. And I just want you to remember that you control the outcome, not saying that every time it's going to be the way you want it to end up, but if you don't have hope and you don't persevere, then it becomes less likely. So I wish you well. I thank you for allowing me to come here. I'm so happy to see you in person. I wish you all a very, very nice summer, a tremendous summer, and I hope you have a great transition to high school. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Assistant Superintendent Tom Liberty, uh, for your words. At this time, we are going to be getting to our citizenship award. So uh, any student that, because uh, we practice for two days, uh, any student that is uh, receiving the citizenship award, if you'd make your way at this time to this uh, stage right where we practiced. So. If you haven't noticed, parents, we have arranged this in a very different fashion, and the students are doing so well with it. Uh, they are just wonderful. And they were all here on time. This is like the first year we've had everybody here. This is just an extraordinary group. So without further ado, I uh, would like to introduce you to Mr. Ben Bahok and Mr. Lou Schwartz. They are from the Stevens Buswell Post. Um, Joining them actually to read the names will be our own Mrs. Gothier. Uh, I like to think of Mrs. Gothier as our, our Dean of Names. Um, she has uh, really worked hard with our students to make sure we get all the names properly. So she's going to be reading the names for the award. But in the meantime, I am going to give you to the gentleman from the Stevens Buswell Post. Good evening, all. You definitely don't want me pronouncing anybody's name since I'm an old Army guy. <laughs> well, good evening, uh, students, family members, faculty, and staff. My name is Mr. Ben Bahok, and with me tonight is Mr. Lou Schwartz, and we are representing the Bedford American Legion, Buzz, uh, Stephen Buswell Post 54, uh, here from town. Uh, first and foremost, I definitely want to thank God for giving us the opportunity to once again come together to celebrate the achievements of our students. Considering the circumstances we have all been under, I want to also thank the Ross Lurgio faculty and staff for their commitment to our students. And if you join me in a warm uh, applause for their efforts, I really appreciate it. God, well done, guys. So obviously it's an honor for us to be here this evening. Lou and I are grateful for the opportunity to participate in this great annual tradition of recognizing these great students who have been selected by their teachers for demonstrating outstanding scholarship, achievement, and citizenship. On behalf of the American Legion, along with your family members and Lurgio staff, I want to congratulate each and every one of you for your extraordinary achievements while attending Lurgio Middle School and being a potential winner of the American Legion Citizen Award. Each one of you will receive a certificate attesting to your achievement. And at this time, I'll ask Ms. Gauthier to come and help us 
with the names as we present the certificates uh, to all of the, thir the uh, 14 candidates, and then the two award winners are uh, following shortly thereafter. I'm going to have the kids, they're going to come up on the stage. Yep. So the following students were finalists in our Citizenship Award this year. Brady Anderson, Riley Andrews, Madison Ayu, Zoe Sensabella, Luis Cruz, Gustav Forge, Gianna George, Connor Hayes, Sarah Capitan, Joel Matthew, Van Aiden Nguyen, Eleanor Olivero, Annika Scott, and Marin Slosberg. So out of all 10 finalists, we have two winners this year for our Citizenship Award. The two winners for our Citizenship Award for 2021 are Eleanor Olivero and Gustav Forgi. So if students want to, yeah, there's one. Here we go. So Mr. Baroque just mentioned that those two winners, uh, Eleanor and Gustav, received a certificate. They also received a monetary award and a medal to celebrate uh, the good work they've done in this school as citizens. So can we have one more round of applause for all of our nominees and recipients? Thank you, Ms. Goth. I appreciate it. Um, so, so we'll definitely figure out the certificate piece there. Uh, I think there's more than enough. They probably just got stuck together. But if not, if your names are misspelled, blame me. And Mr. Uh, Joyce will call me and say, hey, fix this. And we'll fix it and we'll rush you right back to the school to make sure that you guys get your certificate with your names spelled correctly. Aside from that, parents, faculty, students, thank you guys uh, for coming out. And we really appreciate it. And we wish you all the best as you transition over to high school. Good luck, guys. You guys can go. Go that way. That was our fault. It wasn't the students and it wasn't the, the Legion, but we're, we'll get them all there. We got a few mix-ups there, but uh, it's actually the, the Citizenship Award is, holds a very special place in my heart. Uh, it is uh, very special to be recognized by, by members of our community, especially the American Legion, uh, to honor those students who have has been so outstanding and making Lurgio a great place to learn. So thank you. Next for, yeah, all right. Uh, that's good. I like that. That's good enthusiasm. Next up, we're going to go to our uh, World Language Awards. And to begin, we are going to start off with our French Awards. So those students that are receiving French Awards, if you'd make your way to stage right, that would be lovely. And I will introduce to you Madame Anderson.
Good evening, bonsoir. The National French Contest, Le Grand Concours, is an annual competition for students of French in grades one through 12. The contest assesses students' listening and reading comprehension skills, as well as their understanding of vocabulary and grammar. This year, over 6,000 students nationwide participated in Le Grand Concours for level one. Please join us in congratulating the following students who performed exceptionally well on the contest. Prizes were awarded by the contest based on percentile rankings. Receiving the Certificat d'honneur, or honor, honorable mention, for placing in the 70th through 50th percentile, Bridget Backer. <laughs> Christina Babawi. Leah Cook. Marit Dahlen. Rhea Dogra. Violet Falvey. <laughs> Zoe Gagney. <laughs> Erica Gerson. Annabelle Juris. Alex Peters Dimitriou. Ethan Pulsifer. Navi Arai. Annika Scott. Elizabeth Vando. Kira Vigno. And Henry Wirch. Receiving a bronze medal for placing in the 80th or 75th percentile, Saba Khan. Madeline Lee. Elise Nagenda. <laughs> Receiving a silver medal for placing in the 90th or 85th percentile, Beatrice Besker. And Nora Mary.
Okay, I'll pass it over to our Spanish awards. So at this time, students that are receiving Spanish awards, if you would make your way to stage right to prepare to receive your awards. I also had the privilege to introduce Senora Hayner, one of our Spanish teachers who will be presenting the awards. Uh, she'll be assisted by Profe Masson and Senora Gagney. The National Spanish exams are administered each year in grades six through 12 and are sponsored by the American Association of Teachers of Spanish and Portuguese. These exams are the largest of their kind in the United States, and this year over 55 students participated. The purpose of the exams is to promote proficiency and achievement in the study of Spanish. So tonight we would like to recognize and congratulate our Lurgio students who excelled on the level one exam. Earning honorable mention are Bryce Ahn, Ethan Benjamin, Maggie Burleth, Camille Bishop, Arwen Chen, David Kong, Isabel Constantine, Luis Cruz, Jenna Dindorf, Mariana Dion. <laughs> Evelyn Duke. <Duke. laughs> Aidan Farnham. <laughs> Madeline Fennessy. Audrey Furlan. Tess Forte. Eric Fournier. Charles Galamaga. Madison Gukin, Parker Gupta, Jordan Hayden, Karina Kamenini, Van Aden Nguyen, McKenna O'Connell, Connor O'Rourke, long list, Alex Pascu, Kaylin Rain, Brian Riccio. Erica Rice, Oops. 
Ashley Samuel. <laughs> Samiksha Sajiv. Marino Sideris. Alexa Silvia. Beck Semenovic. Yash Virkar. Derek Walensky. And Anjan Yala Manchili. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Next, we have those students earning bronze distinction, which is the scoring of the 75th to 84th percentile, uh, starting with Leah Boone. Harry Dermody. Joel Matthew. Abigail McKay. Jenny Merck. Riley Noon. and Dustin Westcott. And now we have those earning uh, silver distinction, which is the 85th to the 94th percentile. Uh, Riley Andrews. Josie Denisi. Jasmine Hue. Anna Johnson, Colin Johnson, Gabriela Lucchese, Daphne McKenzie, <laughs> Mohib Mir. Sarah Ray, Jacob Sheff, and finally Ethan Steichen. Congratulations. Thank you, Senora Hayner, and thank you, students. Congratulations to all of you. Uh, next up, I have Mrs. Linda Cordes, who will be presenting our Latin and our German award. So I give you Mrs. Cordes. I snuck in the wrong way. Hello, everybody. Salute, omnes, discipuli, discipuli. The National Latin Exam Award is given to approximately 75,000 students all over the globe. And our Latin scholars, of which the eighth grade was probably the smartest I've ever seen. The kindest, for sure, and the nicest. I know last year, as seventh graders, they had quite a reputation. <laughs> but as far as I was concerned, in my classroom, they were wonderful, lovely students. And I'm going to miss them a lot. And I'm going to start crying out if I keep talking. OK. so. Our first award goes to Okay. Oh, could you go to stage right? All those who have awards. That's all right. Oops. That's okay. We're flowy. We can handle it. Right? Okay, the first award goes for perfect score in the National Latin Exam, goes to Jada Bruno, 
And here she comes. <laughs> All the way. And she gets the gold award, gold medal. The next award goes to my favorite window maker, Natalie Fenstermacher. <laughs> Silver, maxima cum laude. <laughs> One of my other favorites, Ashley Van Valkenburg. <laughs> Silver, maxima cum laude. Our next wonderful Latin scholar, Mia Walthausen, magna cum laude. No, Mia. Okay. Our next one, William Perkins, magna cum laude. Our tallest Latin scholar. Our next Latin scholar, William Liu, cum laude. And we have two honorable mentions. Kamala Srinivasan. <laughs> and Brady Visaggio. <laughs> you haven't got rid of me yet. Since I speak no German, I'm doing the American Association of Teachers of German Award. I do have many friends who speak German, so it's okay. It's the Silver Award, uh, Distinguished Achievement, National German Exam to Colton Widener. I had to make sure I got it right. <laughs> Yay, Colton. <laughs> Gracias, Multas. All right, so a anything that goes wrong in this whole show, that's, it's my fault, so uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, and actually, anything that goes wrong in the school, it's also my fault, too, so it's really just all my fault. So uh, anyways, thank you for your patience and your grace. Uh, next, we're gonna get to our academic awards, and the first uh, group of academic awards that we honor is the students that have earned all A's and B's over the course of their two years at Lurgio with us. Um, to read those names, I have the privilege of introducing Mrs. Gauthier, our assistant principal, and, uh, and she does a tremendous amount around the school. Uh, earlier, I made a joke, a quip of saying that uh, she's just the dean of names. She does so much more, as many of you have had interactions with her. She's also our athletics director and, uh, and does a phenomenal job. So I give you Mrs. Gauthier to read the names, and uh, here we go. So I'm going to ask uh, my students uh, who um, have received the Academic Excellence Award to go line up in the wings like we practiced earlier. What? Oh, we're doing A's and B's first? Okay. Sorry. Your fault. <laughs> I have one job. Okay. Awesome. So the front section is going to start moving first. So like we practiced today, go up into the wings and there'll be teachers waiting for you.
So receiving the award for all A's and B's academic honors uh, for their time at Lurgio Middle School. We have Oscar Aguiar. Anika Adi. Bryce Ahn. Yusuf Ali. Catherine Allard. Ella Andre, Keaton Avella, Bridget Backer, Nicholas Bedoian, Vashi Bajpai. Arav Bazar, Maya Boshiman, Ethan Benjamin, Rebecca Bennett, Grace Bergeron. Maggie Burleth. Aubrey Beyer. Jacob Bielecki. Ariana Biondi. Camille Bishop. Quinn Bolton, <laughs> Leah Boone, <laughs> Michael Bodice, <laughs> Colby Boyd, <laughs> Evan Capello. Rose Cariello. David Casado. Noah Casamassino. Layla Chaffetz. Justin Chiris. Emma Ceruso. <laughs> Isabel Constantine. <laughs> Nathan Conway. <laughs> Alexander Cotnor. <laughs> Sean Cronin. Carter Crowley. <laughs> Luis Cruz. <laughs> Emerson Danish. <laughs> Abigail DeComas. <laughs> Jenna Dindorf. Rhea Dogra. <laughs> Evelyn Duke. <laughs> Logan Drown. 
Sarah Durbin. Ciara Fallon. Violet Falvey. Riley Farrow. Madeline Fennessy. Natalie Fenstermacher. Audrey Furlan. Jaden Fisick. Ashland Fish. Valerio Foltran. Mackenzie Forrester. Tess Forte. Ty Foster. Eric Fournier. Catherine French. Brody Gagney. Now we continue with our list. Zoe Gagney. Emerson Gagney. What? No. Charles Galamaga. Gianna George. Erica Gerson. Eliza Gilbert. Paige Gilroy. Nithya Gadamakala. Jaina Grossman. Parker Gupta. Seth Gutman. Ida Hadzik. Haley Hall. Sarah Hampoian. Jordan Hatem. Connor Hayes. Jack Hinton. Annabelle Juris. Karina Kamenani. Jacqueline Carr. Yay! 
Molly Kashawabara. Ruby Kopp. Lucy Kopp. Saba Khan. Madeline Kylie. Stella Clock. Sai Coma. Theodore Kramer. Sean Kraus. Yuna Kumbani. Camden Laird. Nicholas LaRoche. Leah LeBlanc. Madeline Lee. Amelia Lewick. Anselm Lynn. James Looney. Owen Lubick. Amelia McDonald. Kevin Master Casa. Jack May. Jennifer Merck. Eric Millis. Talon Milam. John Morse. Max Murthy. Max Mudd. Eli Nasser. Elise Nagenda. Van Aden Nguyen. Now we continue. Jack Noonan. <laughs> Riley Noon. <laughs> McKenna O'Connell. <laughs> Michael O'Connor. Connor O'Rourke. Yeah. 
Parker O'Toole. Lauren O'Brighter. Eleanor Olivero. William Perkins. Owen Pete. Alex Peters Dimitriou. Brooke Poirier. Dean Poltroneri. Lillian Pope. Julian Posey. Grayson Preventure. Ethan Pulsifer. Luke Purnell. Navia Rai. Kaylin Rain. Erica Rice. Lucas Sampo. Samiksha Sanjeev. Peyton Sarsfield. Carly Sheffer. Ryan Schneller. Annika Scott. Ryland Sellers. Jacob Sheff. Marino Citrus. Alexa Sylvia. Beck Simeonovic. Marin Slosberg. Leah Spector. Nicholas Spencer. Alex St. Hilaire. Julia St. Hilaire. Ethan Steichen. Eric Stensgard. Carl Stoll. Sarah Stoniker. Peter Swazo. Kyle Swazo. Avi Thapa. Ashley Van Valkenburg. Elizabeth Vando. Kira Vino. Madison Vigu. Brady Visaggio.
Peter Walker. Keegan Ware. Colton Widener. Heather Wheelbrenner. Dustin Westcott. Derek Walensky. Connor Winslow. Henry Wirch. Bro Brody Roloski. Anjan Yalamanchili. Caleb Yeter. Maggie Yetten. Can I have a big round of applause for all of our A's and B's? Up next is our Academic Excellence Award. This award celebrates the fact that these students got all A's throughout their time at Lurgio in seventh and eighth grade. So the Academic Excellence Award goes to the following students. Amelia Alden. <laughs> Riley Andrews. Beatrice Beskar. Christina Bibawi. Arwen Chen. David Kong. Marit Dahlin. Josie Denisi. Caitlin Daly. Harry Dermody. Aiden Farnham. Madison Gukin. Jessamine Hoy. Anna Johnson. Colin Johnson. William Lossman. Gabriella Lukasik. Joel Matthew. Abigail McKay. Daphne McKenzie. <laughs> Mohibula Mir. <laughs> Nora Murhi.
Brady O'Connell. Alex Pascu. Sarah Ray. Brian Riccio. Ashley Samuel. Elsie Thomas. Yash Virkar. Oh, yes, yeah. Last one. William Liu. <laughs> Can I have one more round of applause for all of our award recipients? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, to everyone for coming out tonight. I just want to put out another thank you again to uh, Ben Bahoke and uh, Lou Schwartz, who came out from the American Legion, our Assistant Superintendent, Tom LaLiberty, for doing our keynote, BCTV for live streaming, and of course, Mrs. Fitzgerald, who has taken point on this entire ceremony. So can we give all of them just a nice round of applause? Yes, it does feel good to be back together. I'm hoping that this is portents of things to come. Uh, congratulations to all of you students. You've worked very hard for this and have done every day in your actions us all very proud. Um, I can only echo this sentiment one more time, which is to achieve any of these honors in a normal time is difficult. What you have done has been outstanding. You will be a class that lives in my memory forever. You're, most of you are just kind of going next door, and I'll probably see you in high school, and I hope to hear about the great things that you're doing in the future because you've started off so well. I can't re wait to hear about it. Parents, thank you for your support at home. We can't do it without you. So thank you for your support. Students, congratulations again. We can, uh, yeah.